You must excuse me first because I usually tend to get slightly emotional when I talk about this brother, so uh, I apologize in advance. Colin and I used to play together in the National Football League. In his infancy, our relationship consisted of him trying to score touchdowns on me in practice, me trying to never let that happen, and to see who could lift the most weights in the weight room, which I'm sure all of you can tell was me. <laughs> I watched Colin's dedication firsthand. When I arrived at the practice facility at 5.45 in the morning, he was already in the weight room. Every Sunday, I watched Colin have the courage to stand in the pocket, while men my size and much bigger than me tried to tear him to pieces, and I mean literally. More often than anybody on our team wanted, Colin willingly had to take a punishing blow to throw the ball to ensure that we were successful in our mission to win the game. That word courage is exactly the word I would use to describe Colin. It was a courageous act to begin a protest on systemic oppression by himself. When we all know that there's safety in numbers, Colin didn't recruit those numbers. He set out peacefully and he set out quietly on his own. It took three weeks for people to realize and to publicize what Colin was doing during our national anthem. But history has shown us that sometimes you have to face the giant alone in order to inspire others to join you in battle. I was one of those inspired by Colin. I myself have been moved by injustices that I was seeing around me. I'm from Baton Rouge, where Alton Sterling was killed by police officers for simply selling CDs and for being a black man. I wanted to talk to Colin about Alton and to see firsthand and understand firsthand why he was protesting. This is when our relationship went to a much deeper level. What felt like minutes was actually a three hour long conversation. Colin shared with me what he had learned about America's history of systemic injustice towards people of color and the current climate that we live in today. He felt that it wasn't right for us to look the other way while injustices were happening in the country that we lived in. He felt like the platform on which we stood as a result of our hard work and God's blessings should be used for a greater purpose other than that of our own gain. He knew that from the beginning that taking the stand against injustices perpetrated by people in power would put his own livelihood at risk that his ability to play and earn a living in the NFL would potentially be sacrificed in order to make a difference in the world. And he knew that despite what people were saying about him, he had no choice but to continue to protest and speak to the crowds of reporters that entered our locker room after practices and games. Because as Malcolm X once said, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. It's ironic that the stand Colin and I took wasn't to stand at all but it was to take a knee. Colin didn't kneel in protest of a song or a symbolic piece of fabric, but he knelt to bring awareness to the human rights still being denied to people of color. He didn't kneel because he is anti-America, but he believes that America should be held to the standard that it has written on paper, that we are all created equal. However, what Colin has done is not the end of his story. It's quite the opposite. It's the beginning. In 2016, Colin started his nonprofit called Know Your Rights Camp. The free camp teaches youth from marginalized communities their legal rights when in contact with police authority, how to achieve higher education, how to eat through holistic teachings, financial literacy, African history, technology 101, and self-love. I've been to nearly all of his camps, and it's hard to express how powerful they are. The kids are locked in and eager to learn about conversations that simply don't get discussed in schools. And honestly, I've learned a few things myself. I look forward to continuing to watch Colin make the world a better place. And in closing, I'll leave you with one of Colin's own quotes. When I asked him how he managed to deal with the pressure of being a quarterback and an advocate for the people, he said, you know what, E? Sometimes you have to speak a light into a dark room. And with that, it's my honor to present the Ambassador of Constance Award to my brother, Colin Kaepernick.